Thanks for joining the sessions. My name is Jen Huang and I'm from S&P Global Market Intelligence, a division of um, S&P Global. Today we'll share some of our observation on alternative data and its application in credit modeling. We will discuss how alternative data coupled with traditional data can be used in credit risk space to generate insights. In the first half of the sections, we talk about sentiment scores. What is it? How can it be extracted? And how can it be linked to credit risk analysis? In the second half of the sections, we will be focusing on climate risk, a new type of financial risk that has been gaining traction in the recent year, driven predominantly by regulations. We will talk about transition risk and more specifically, how carbon tax can impact a company's financial stance and its credit worthiness. In this slide, while traditional data such as company financials are still the key input in credit analysis, alternative data are becoming more relevant for credit risk modeling in the recent years. As you can see in this slide, alternative data has the advantages of being more timely, having broader coverages, and cover more dimensions. Alternative data can also be used to enhance the analytical model performance. On the other hand, alternative data normally have shorter history. It is more fragmented, so requires significant manipulations. It requires new analytics to analyze the data and generate insights. Last but not the least, one needs to be very careful when handling alternative data to ensure that compliance with regulations, for example, the privacy protection law. On the modeling front, quite often, machine learning algorithm is used to model, trans to use so model transparency might become an issue. Further, most of the model were developed during period when the economics are doing quite well. Those models are being put into test this year as the COVID-19 breakout, which is dragged the economy into a benign period. Example of some common alternative data. We show in this slide some common alternative data that can be potentially used in credit modeling. Sentiment, as we go over in a bit more details later, is being used by market participants to provide timely alerts with regards to a company's operations financing situation um, and litigation, etc. Satellite data, for example, freight data that shows cargo shipment activities, satellite data that monitor the storage amount of crude oils in the crude oil storage tank, night light satellite that shows the brightness and distribution of night lights of a city, which can then be used as a proxy to gauge economic activities in the region. Geolocation and foot traffic data can also help to check movement of people and the popularity of certain locations. For example, the number of daily visitors of a coffee shop chain in China. Number of people passing the Macau custom is one of the popular alternative data measure, which is used as a proxy to the profitability of the Macau based casinos companies, which are listed companies. E-commerce data that provide the GMV of a train brand to predict the revenue of the company that owns that brand. Payment and transaction data can be used as behavioral data to help gauge the willingness and ability and the timeliness of a business to repay its debt. Regarding sentiment, S&P Global Market Intelligence has developed a tool to generate sentiment score for Chinese company announcements. As this, as this slide demonstrate, the tool can take a company announcement issue by Chinese listed company and bond issuers, extract the text using the OCR technology, apply a Chinese NPL or natural language processing and machine learning algorithm to generate a sentiment score for each announcement period. There will be an aggregate score for each company using an exponentially weighted scheme. As you can see in step three, the black solid line is the aggregated score, while the green dot represents the sentiment score of each article. The shaded area is the marginal error. Sentiment score above the dotted horizontal line represents a positive sentiment with regard to a company 
financial health. While the sentiment score below the dotted line represent negative sentiment. As an analyst that cover an industry or a number of companies, having the ability to scan through a large amount of company announcements and review the relevant sections of a lengthy document, which at some point could be as long as 150 page, can greatly improve the efficiency of the analyst who is trying to generate insight from such company announcements. A little bit more detail on the process of how this can be done. This slide describes the end-to-end -end process to assess, pass, process, and analyze announcement to extract each article embedded in opinion in terms of financial health of the company. The left-hand side of the chart provides a high-level overview of a typical workflow, namely automated collection of announcement documents, transform the unstructured to structured text via OCR and document analysis, pre-process the structured body of the text to define sentence, paragraph, and sections, vectorization model, model training and validation, sentiment classification model, and in the end sentiment indicator, and visualization on the platform. Let's also briefly touch upon the sentiment classification automation system, which is based upon machine learning. For this machine learning architecture, we have our, our quantum has assessed alternative methodology and chose the model that has the two main components. The first one is the con convolutional neural network. They can learn local pattern of the input sequence. However, they have no memory by design. Each input shown to them is processed independently, which had no state kept in between the inputs. And that actually allow the algorithm to quickly snip through a huge amount of documents. Long short-term memory network, which iterated over input sequences and quote unquote remember what they have seen so far. And as the context we're dealing with is Chinese, context means everything, which means a algorithm that has memory is more suitable to deal with um, Chinese text. Our analysis shows combining the CNN and LSTM networks gives the model the ability to learn complexity of the Chinese language. Once we have the sentiment score, the natural next step is to build a model that can link sentiment score to the assessment of the creative worthiness of a company. This slide shows the preliminary analysis that our quant team has conducted. The graph shows one standard deviation band of company sentiment score for each month prior to each default event. On averages, sentiment score tend to move down to negative zone 12 months prior to the default, while they stay positive for the non-defaulters. Sentiments are much diverse, diversely distributed for the defaulter than for the non-defaulters. And as I say about this um, sample, this sample is from our um, NEEQ database, which is the Chinese OTC market. And we um, also collected the defaulted companies within this sample size in the past five years. Sentiment score can be used to build a standalone model or can be used as an overlay model for credit analysis. Coming up to, it could say it's a combination of alternative data, modeling and alternative risk, which is climate risk. Climate risk has recently become a new type of financial risk. The climate change is prompting investor to consider possible climate related scenario and evaluate the impact on their portfolios. This increased after the 2015 Paris Agreement, which formalized the commitment to facilitate the transition to a low carbon economy by enacting a variety of policies to reduce greenhouse gas, GHG. This has resulted in regulatory changes and industry-led initiative that have further advanced the effort to better understand and manage economic risk related to climate change. Climate risks are often grouped into two categories, physical risk and transition risk. Physical risks are the risks associated with physical effect of climate change. They include changes in water availability, sourcing and quality, food security, 
and extreme temperature change affecting organizations' premises, operation, supply chain, transport needs, and the employee safety. TCFD, or Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosure, they also included logistic, legislative and other risks that stem from those hazards, like changes in land use rules that rise from flooding to a storm. On the other hand, transition risks are the risks associated with transition to a low carbon economy, which is normally regulatory driven. According to TCFD, they may entail extensive policy, legal, technology, and market changes to address migration, to address mitigation and adaptations requirements related to climate change. Depending on the corrective response from the company, several climate scenarios can unfold over the next years and decades. A strong and immediate collective action, such as the wide implementation of the carbon tax, would create transition risk for certain carbon intensive industry and minimize the physical impact. However, on the other hand, with a limited corrective response, the physical effect of the climate change will become more prominent. So there is an interaction between the transition risk and the physical risk of climate risk. This slide shows um, market intelligence approach to modeling the transition risk. On the left-hand side, we describe the fundamental driven, which is based upon our credit model and the scenario generated from Remind. On the right-hand side, it is an internal development model, which is based upon our PD market signal model. The scenario we generated is using our true cost company specific emission data. In the following few slides, I will be using example to go through what those models entail. S&P Global Market Intelligence, in consultation with Oliver Wyman, developed the fundamental driven climate link credit analytics tool that enable investor and risk manager at banks and non-financial corporations to estimate the impact of the carbon tax on company operating in upstream oil and gas sector. The two integrated with my scenario to project the impact of carbon tax on a company financial statement and evaluate the company's credit score. The fundamentals based analysis is particularly suitable for companies operating in high CO2 intensity intensive sectors. This tool can also be employed to support TCFD recommendations, which will become mandatory this year, for senatories and the principal response investment PRI on forward-looking scenario analysis of potential path to a low carbon economy and disclosure of related transition risk. The climate link credit analysis to adopt a fundamental driven view providing a company-specific credit score assessment for over, over 1,000 public and private upstream oil and gas companies on the Capital IQ platform. In addition to this tool, we develop a complementary module based on a market-driven view that cover all public companies on the platform. Leveraging the true cost data, this tool provides an estimate of future market capitalizations and a credit scores condition on the user-defined carbon tax scenario. The tool can be used on public or public companies across the sectors. And this slide shows a stylized overview of the fundamental driven approach. The model input can be the global carbon tax scenario or the remind scenario. Uh, I'll get to the what's remind scenario later. The global carbon tax scenario at as event-based disorderly transition where the carbon tax premium is applied globally over a three-year time horizon, and companies have limited opportunity to adapt. This scenario can be employed as a genuine stress testing analysis of the introduction of carbon tax. Remind scenario is a climate economic scenario developed by the Postdam Institute of Climate Impact Research, PIK. This holistic scenario is based on a global general equilibrium approach that incorporates the economy, the climate system, 
and a detailed representation of the energy sectors. The scenario assumes gradual increase of carbon price over a decade that result in a transition to a low carbon economy. The scenario captures both risk and opportunity of climate transition via primary and a secondary effect and accounts for economic and energy investment in different regions, as well as international trade in goods, energy, emission allowance. Scenario is often used for policy purpose to describe an orderly transition scenario and is based on long-term modeling and transition assumptions. So our model take, in, take into account the um, remind scenario as the input. The second step, as you can see on the diagram, is to link climate change to credit risk. We identify four drivers of the financial performance for upstream oil and gas company that captured the impact of the climate related scenarios. Volume, price, unit cost, and capex. In the first step, we translate the impact of a climate scenario on those four drivers at an individual company level. Next, we drive the scenario adjusted financial for each company and drive credit risk metrics to evaluate the changes in credit quality. This approach enables granular and comprehensive analysis of company specific climate impact. With regards to the model output, the model's primary output includes projected complete financial statement for the next three years and spe specific scenarios, as well as corresponding credit scores via MI's credit model. Our statistical credit score model to evaluate the credit worthiness of company based on the projected scenario from driving from the um, scenario, credit model employed and advanced generation of the logistic regressions and is designed to evaluate long-term credit worthiness. The model generates a quantitative credit score that statistically matches a credit rating by S&P Global Ratings. Using this approach, enable users to efficiently model the credit risk for multiple companies under various climate scenarios. Additionally, the model let the user perform a detailed analysis of the sensitive and contribution of a specific financial sector factors to the credit score. This enables us to determine the impact of the climate scenario on credit worthiness by the model driver and financial ratios. I'll show you an example in the next slide. This slide provides an example of that scenario generated upstream um, of an upstream oil and gas company. As a baseline, we leverage financial statements data market available by the end of 2018 when the company's estimated credit score equals to A minus. We apply the climate link credit analytics tool to calculate the projected scenario based financials and the associated credit score for a three year horizons. We assume the carbon tax was introduced in 2019 and increased linearly to 50 US dollars per CO2 ton by 2021. As you can see, the impact of the carbon tax on the company is limited in the initial year and the projected credit score remains stable through 2020. It could be attributed to the company leading positions as one of the largest oil and gas producers by revenue and its global diversifications, making it less sensitive to a carbon tax increase. However, our results show the deterioration of the company's credit score to triple B plus in 2021, when the same carbon tax has applied, integrating a deteriorating level of company's credit worthiness to a carbon tax. In addition to assessing the overall impact of carbon tax on credit score of a company, our credit model ensures users to analyze which financial ratio will be most affected by the introduction of the carbon tax and be the main driver of the credit score deteriorations. For example, the gearing ratio, asset turnover, EBIT, interest coverage ratio are the largest contributor to the credit score for the company in 2019. 
denotified the absolute contributions analysis. Such insights let our user perform a detailed analysis of the sensitive and driver of credit score for a chosen climate transition scenario. Next, we'll talk about a market-driven approach, which offers a market-driven view of how earning of a public company might change over the next three decades under multiple carbon tax scenarios. The tool leverage true cost companies specified greenhouse gas emission data and accommodate predefined carbon tax scenario or user defined global carbon tax scenarios. The tool calculate the change in credit score between today and a future year. Using the market driven approach, the tool offers the view of how earning of public company may change over the next three decades under multiple scenarios. The graph on the left hand side shows the distributions of credit score changes between 2019 and 2050 for public company within the material sector. One of them, one of the high CO2 emitting sectors. We employ the public firm tools for a fast, for example, two degree Celsius transition scenarios, where the carbon tax rapidly increase and company react in one of the four ways, ranging from green to red. On the green bar, it means company managed to meet the CO2 emission reduction target in 2050 by investing in a greener technology and thus sustaining the abatement cost in, a, in addition to carbon tax cost. Revenue include both a growth component and a cost related component. To the red bar, Companies do not invest in new or greener technology and pay higher carbon tax. Plus, government introduced additional policy that forcefully reduced the carbon emissions by pro progressively banning use of carbon material and thus leading to revenue loss on the affected companies, with yellow and amber scenarios in between. In all cases, a significant percentage of the company remains with the same credit score under the fast transition. The remainder change their credit score in either directions, confirming the importance of managing risk, but also seizing opportunity for over the longer term. The green case shows the advantage of investing in, in greener technology and thus reducing the carbon emission tax while incurring higher operating costs on new technologies. In this case, the vast majority of the company, around 71%, will experience an improvement in their credit scores by one or more notches, while the 26% remain with the same score, and only one will incur a, a technical default over the next 30 years. In the extreme cases, which is the red case, correspond to an extreme scenario where companies do not convert to new technology, but have to pay an increased carbon tax. This is well government enforced restrictive law to curb carbon emission and reduce revenue losses among companies in proportion to the carbon emission reductions. In the red case, the, tech, the technical default rate over the next 30 years increased to almost 79% with potential severe consequences for the material sectors and economy as a whole. Next, we'll talk about the physical risk data. I believe that we've talked about the, uh, the model of transition risk. So the natural next step is how are we dealing with the physical risk? As we mentioned, we cover uh, coverages of uh, 15,000 company and 500 underlying asset, which cover the seven climate changes, physical risk indicator, including heat wave, cold wave, water stress, hurricane, wildfire, and flood and sea level rises. Low and moderate high figure climate changes scenarios, range of time frames, including in the next five years, 10 years, and 30 years. Our quant team are currently working with um, Oliver Wyman in order to build a physical risk 
model to link fiscal risk to credit risk. In conclusion, alternative data has been gaining traction in credit modeling and surveillance in recent years. An integrated workflow to collect, clean, extract, link, and analyze the alternative data for risk management is key to efficiently generate actionable insight for risk monitoring. Climate risk emerge as a new type of financial risk which need to be measured, monitored, and managed. Climate risk modeling is still in its infancy, so a lot of development is going on in the industry across the globe. That will be all of my presentation today. Thank you very much.